You know, the first time Alexis did my makeup was for a Playboy cover with Dan Aykroyd, the Conehead one, and I remember just saying, where have you been on my life? <laughs> Pam Anderson's makeup is trending and I want to do it exactly how her makeup artist did. Her makeup artist was Alexis Vogel. I got the DVD. I got the book. I even got the whole entire makeup system. I'm Erin Parsons, a makeup artist that is beauty history obsessed. Let's get into this makeup. This look is quite familiar to me, but I never realized that Alexis did all of the Playboy magazines, that she was really responsible for Pam Anderson's actual makeup look and what sort of turned her from that fresh faced baby Bardot into this like vixen, this smoky eyed, glossy lipped look. I wanna follow it exactly. I wanna honor Alexis because she really deserves a lot more credit. She really developed a look that defined that era. The crazy thing is she also did the hair. That teased up, sort of tussled beach wave hair, that was Alexis, which really shocked me that she did both. We're gonna honor Alexis, we're gonna follow everything from the DVD, from the book, and we're going to try to do actual Pam Anderson makeup from start to finish, using her techniques, using her products, and see if we can get it to really look authentic. Let's start with the eyebrows, the skinny brows. It's the 90s, the early 2000s, the brows were so thin. As a matter of fact, it's because of Pamela Anderson, I I actually tweezed out all of my brows in 1999 and I was left with a little less than what I have here. I actually had an eyebrow transplant maybe like five years ago. So I have taken hair from my head and put it in my eyebrows. Now you guys know I usually shave them off and draw them pencil thin. So this is actually grown out for about a week and uh, they're pretty furry. But in order to have that Alexis Vogel look, we gotta go thin. Now Alexis has the eyebrow stencils in the kit. We have fine, full, and classic. I'm gonna go for classic. It's not the thinnest one, it's not the thickest. I think this is gonna give us that Pam Anderson shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to line the stencil right up to the corner of my eye. This is the blonde pencil, dirty blonde. And I'm just gonna rough sketch. I'm obviously not gonna tweeze my hairs. Now that I've gotten that thin shape, I'm gonna go ahead and start to use a little brow razor and shape it down to a skinny little Pam brow. And just so I can be precise, I'm gonna get really close to a mirror. So I'm gonna do this off camera and I'll be back with some very skinny eyebrows. So you get two eyebrow pencils when you order the entire kit. I'm gonna start with, again, with the Dirty Blonde. We also have the Easy Brown. She takes the stencil and she starts it right at the inner corner of the eye. While I'm filling in this brow, why don't we watch Alexis do the eyebrows? Go from the front corner of the eye and that's where you place the front. Take your eyebrow pencil and you just fill it in. You don't want heavy lines, you just want it to look natural with a little bit of an arch, classic arch eyebrow. I mean, she's really all about cutting with scissors, really long hairs and tweezing. I added a little bit of the easy brown pencil just to darken the edges. I kind of love this pencil because it's not so waxy. A lot of the pencils nowadays are kind of hard or more waxy. And this is really an old school pencil where it's almost like a shadow in an eyebrow pencil. So it was really easy to use. Okay. I eyebrows are on, very authentic and true to that time. This is really bringing me back. <laughs> Her secret weapon is this triangle little cheap sponge. She uses it for the eyes, she uses it for the cheeks, she uses it for the lips. It's amazing. I'm gonna go through, of course, all of that. But we're gonna use her foundation. Notice how Alexis puts the base on. Always start with as little base as possible and cover the entire face, the ears, and be sure to go down the neck. One is a little bit deeper and one's a little lighter, the vanilla and the honey bee. And actually, I did make my skin a bit warmer, so I went in with a lot of the honey bee, but it's pretty amazing. Our base is so great that you don't have to use moisturizer. A lot of people put moisturizer on and then they wonder why their face <laughs> falls off halfway through the day like a pizza, just kind of oh, goes whoosh. No moisturizer, just go right in with the foundation. And she coats the sponge and then she just basically wipes the skin. She seems to really like the foundation quite light, but she wants it everywhere, covering everything. And it's interesting with this foundation, it gives coverage, but more kind of sheer to medium. Cover every bit of skin on your face as thinly as possible. So she does have a concealer inside here and there's actually a powder on the other side. So I want to try that out. Oh, that definitely gives some coverage. So you can use the makeup, the base as a concealer. If it's not enough, then you add a little more concealer. For the powder, she says it is important to powder your entire face. Powder is the key tip or trick 
to keeping your makeup on all day. In the DVD, I think she uses a loose powder, but the kit comes with a pressed powder. I'm kind of curious to see. I feel like this is going to be a bronzer on me, but I'm going to go ahead and take the puff that comes in the kit. I'm going to have to put a lighter powder in the center. She also says to go over the eyebrows just to soften them a little. Okay, I'm gonna try to save this. I'm just using a bit of Kosa's. And what she recommends is to use a brush to buff everything into the skin. The duster brush is a big fluffy brush. And if you have any excess powder on your face and you want it to even, you know, look more natural, buff it. Almost like you're doing a buffing a shoe. <laughs> this is the La Mer brush and she just goes with a fluffy brush and just like buffs everything in. Alexis calls this her magic eraser and she dips in just the tip into a bit of water and squeezes it out and then just for under the eyes like after you powder on top of a concealer she'll take a little bit of that wet sponge and just lightly get where any creases would be. If there's any little streakies or little lines it just helps blend it in and gives it a more natural look. Kind of genius. She even says that if you have too much powder on the face, you can get the entire sponge wet. She, I think she used to make a setting spray, but they don't sell it anymore. But you just take that sponge and just go right over top of the entire face and it just gets rid of some of that powderiness. I'm going to apply the blush with a blush brush. So this is the Radiant Powder Blush and the color is Tipsy. It looks very much like a NARS orgasm type of color. She says to go right on the apples of the cheeks and tap tap on the blush. Never go into the temple, just keep it right on the cheekbone. That's a pretty color. Go in circular motions. This is called the apple. Just have fun with it. After you do your blush, if you've done too much, and I think I have, I look like I have two stripes on my face. Again, you're going with your eraser. If you get too much blush on, take your big eraser and just wipe it away. I never really noticed blush in any of Alexis's makeup. It kind of just enhances the skin a little bit. You know, I gotta say, I've been playing with these products and they're really, really good. Upon closer inspection, I do not like the shimmer from the blush here where it accentuates the pores. So I've tried to powder that down. Color's cute, color is cute. Okay, we're gonna go into the signature natural eye. And she does it with four different eyes in the book from the signature to the cat eye, and then of course the smoky eye, and then there's the career eye. But I think we're gonna go from the signature natural, which they teach in the DVD, and then we'll go into that Pam Anderson black smoky eye. Okay, we're gonna go in with Phantom Pudgy Pencil, and you're just gonna go underneath the eye. All you're doing is emphasizing what you already have. Use the chubby pencil from the front corner to the end of your eyelashes and make a soft, smudgy line about one eighth of an inch thick. Okay, we're gonna go into the Urban Velvet Shadow and this shadow, basically you're meant to match your eyeshadow to the pudgy pencil. Of course, this came in the kit and go on top with the brush. With some dry eyeshadow, gently draw against the smudged line for a soft, smoky look. Now, how do we blend out the shadow? The sponge, you just take that little tip and you blend and soften the edges. It's so weird to blend your eyeshadow with a sponge, but it is not gonna stop here. This angle brush that comes in the kit is huge, but she uses this with the, it's like a water activated retro cake liner. You have two shades, you have the black and the chocolate. For the natural eye, we're gonna go in with, you can do it with the pudgy pencil, but in the DVD, she also shows to use the cake liner. So we're just gonna mix the water into the brown side. Here's the trick for getting a nice cat eye angle. You always wanna have your eyes go up for a youthful, sexy look. Here's what you do. She does a pretty big wing and then she blends it out with a Q-tip. She says to pull the eyes and just start to sweep. Oh my gosh, look at that. It actually goes in kind of like a shadow and then pull up. When you watched the DVD, it is kind of messy like this and just more of a thick shadow, like a thick wing. Whoa, that doesn't look bad actually. I was kind of scared for this cause I'm so about precision. That's actually really pretty. Okay, Q-tip. She takes the Q-tip and she softens it out. Use your Q-tip for correcting, changing, or altering your line. Before I go on any further with the eyeshadow, I forgot a very important step. So when she does the brows, she adds the glow dust. The best way to use sparkle dust is Alexis wet technique. Simply moisten your fingertip, a Q-tip or the angled brush, and then dip it in the sparkle dust. Now apply and watch how it covers and adheres. 
It's like magic and it's so sexy. We didn't highlight the entire face in the 90s and the early 2000s. We highlighted the brow bone and that was it. So we have the sequin shadow here. So I saw Pam Anderson recently did like a what's in my bag for Vogue. One of the products that she pulled out was this glow dust. I don't know what color it was, but Alexis makes a few different ones. This one is definitely more gold. And now your eyes are perfect. Here's where the fun begins. We have Alexis Vogel Shadow Shammy. They also call it the Shadow Shaper. So this book is actually from 2013 and the DVD is from, I think, 2002. So it looks like they went from Shadow Shammy to Shadow Shaper. This is probably Alexis' greatest secret weapon. It's called the Shadow Shammy and no one has ever used or suggested anything like it before. It's pretty cool because like in the entire DVD, they talk a lot about this and they're like, this is really revolutionary to the makeup world. Drag queens, of course, will like put a card down and just put their shadow on, but these are very particular. For this eye, we're doing the natural eye, so I'm going to take the natural side. Now, place your magic shadow chamois under your lower lashes and place it at about a 45 degree angle halfway between vertical and horizontal. We're gonna go back into the same shadow that I used under called Urban. And she says to use this part all the way at the tail of the brow. Put on as much or as little shadow as you like. Usually a little more for evening and more drama and use less for daytime. We are gonna blend with the sponge. She says to move in and upward. So we're gonna try to do that. And you go under and you just soften the edges. That's the eyeshadow so far. We're gonna do mascara, where she says to curl the eyelashes, which I've already done, the top lashes. And she says to go in with the Alexis Vogel Deluxe Mascara. Start on the bottom lashes first. So I'm gonna go ahead and put top and bottom, like two coats of mascara, and then I gotta come back for more sparkle dust. You know, they always say it looks like trash to the lash. Even the mascara saved it. it looks good though, right? Who knew? A sponge and a Q-tip to blend your eyeshadow. It's working. It looks pretty. Her mascara for the bottom lashes, I'm obsessed with. Unfortunately, they dropped my curl on the top, so I went in with my all-time favorite. It's the Clinique High Impact Lash Elevating Mascara in a black tube. I don't know why they don't label this as waterproof. I've been gatekeeping this for years. It's my all-time favorite. Okay, we're gonna go in with her pencil, which is Hypnotic and Enchant. It's basically like a gold shimmer on one side and black on the other. And for the natural eye, gonna go in with the gold shimmer. Wow, that's really pretty. That really makes the eye pop and it's not nude. That's a nice gold shimmer. I could get used to that. That's really cute. Now the other side is black, so we'll use that for the next eye. First, we're going back to our glow dust. It's in the DVD. She says either use your fingertip or a cotton bud or a Q-tip or a damp brush and dip into your glow dust. She says it's like magic. Just put a dab on your brush and put it on your eyelid. Next, take your finger and spread it just slightly so that it blends in and seems to disappear. I'm just gonna go right on top of the eyelid in the center of the eye and then just blend out with your fingertip. Don't blend with the brush, blend with your fingertip. Cute, it's cute. Let's listen as Alexis explains how to outline the lips with color. This is very interesting. She starts with a lip stain and she says, put it on the bottom lip and then Press it together. They rub their lips together, rub, and it covers most of the upper lip also. It's like apricot baby food. I kind of like it. The great thing about the Alexis Vogel lip is that you can overdraw, you must overdraw the lips. Oh, finally. Finally, I can do a look that allows me to overdraw. The trick to get those like Pammy lips, you have to kind of draw a little bit higher than their own lip. But I find it really fascinating to do the stain first, then the pencil. It's like a six step lip but it's very Alexis signature. My kit came with one lip pencil and this color is Lisp, but I bought another one called Pout just in case Lisp is too light because it does look extremely light. Now, luckily, as Alexis shows you, we are going to overline, especially in the Cupid's bow area. See, I'm just 
following what's already there. Then you have to feather it in a little bit. I'm sure it's because of Alexis Vogel that I still overline my lips to this day. And I mean, I overline them as far as you can possibly go. Okay, there's the overlining. In the end, I did go in with Pout, which is kind of like a soft version of Spice from MAC or like the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk, but a little less pink. I really do like the color. Lisp was a little bit too light in my opinion. Now I'm gonna go in with the sponge. Here's what she says to do. Go into your foundation or whatever foundation's left on your sponge and you go on top of the entire lip and you tone down the lip liner so it's not so obvious. Okay, this powder is a little too dark for me, so I'm going to mix the powder with the lighter powder that I use, and you go over the entire lip with powder. I still use this technique to this day, but I actually use like a powder foundation. In the DVD, they go straight into the gloss, but a lipstick does come in the kit. You even get a lip brush. A lot of items come in the kit. I mean, it was like $500 in the end, so it was pricey, but you basically get everything that she makes. Okay, so this is the lipstick, and I really want to try the lipstick on and then do the gloss. The two glosses, this is so that lip of that time, that Playboy model lip. It reminds me of Nymphette lip gloss from MAC. I'm such a MAC girl, like I think of everything in terms of MAC, especially from that time, because I worked there from like 99 to 2000, Five, I want to say. I'm going to try the lipstick because it's a nice nude. This one is called Debutante. That's a nice color. So I'm going to go in with the lighter color and this color is called Nudist. And she really talks about getting it in the center of the lip. And you can put it over all of your lips or just the pouty part, the top and bottom pouty part, which is what I like to do right in here. The way that that lip liner is giving that time by doing that technique wild. I'm not mad at that lip, not even a little. Okay, that is the natural look. Here's the trick for getting a nice cat eye angle. So once you have the natural look on, it's really easy to just go into the next look using our shadow chamois eyeshadow shaper. And for this one, now we're gonna do the cat eye, which I've already done. So when we did the natural eye, I used the brown retro cake liner, but I'm going to use the black side this time. Using the angled brush again, dab it in water and then swirl it around in the cake eyeliner. Going into the black side, it's just the same as I did the last time. You pull the eye up, you take the angle brush and you just go upwards. And remember, you don't have to make this perfect because you're gonna use a Q-tip to blend it. <laughs> Good thing about this stuff is it really does blend out easily and it becomes soft and smoky. I'm just gonna go back in with a little bit more of the black and really you should let that completely dry before you blend with your magical Q-tip. Just soften the edges. Back into the pencil, I used the light one for the natural eye, but we're gonna go in for the cat eye using the darker side, which I believe is just a black. She keeps it right inside the actual inner rim and she goes a little bit on top. This is a little black crayon that will make the color jump and the white look whiter. It's really easy, you just run it right along the inside of your lower lid. Two seconds. Time for our shadow, chamois, shaper. We're going in with the smolder eyeshadow, which was the darker of the two that came in the kit. And I'm going back in with the same brush that I did the natural eye. And we're gonna now take the cat eye. Remember to always leave that space. I think signature Alexis is there's a lot of shadow under the eye. Okay, we're gonna dip in and the cat eye now is going outward. Kind of always scared to do this, but she says do a V shape. Outer corner down, creating a V. I feel like this is gonna look really bad. Let's remove it. Oh my God, not bad, not bad. I find the shadow chamois sort of not hard to work with. It's actually really easy, but it's kind of scary because you have no idea what's lying under there. So we're just gonna take our sponge and get rid of that harsh line. We're gonna blend. Look at that though. Look at that. That really does blend away so easily. Now you're ready to start on your eyelashes. She specifically says that she uses Ardell Demi Wispies. Maybe she sold half lashes, they weren't on the website, but for these I went ahead and cut from the inner corner and I count to four. So this is what the lash looks like. But I'm gonna throw this on and then we'll go into the smoky look. So you just put that on the outer corner and then once that sets, we're gonna coat with a lot more mascara. 
The way shadows are designed now, they give such a punch and so much shimmer and so much pigment. Whereas these, because you can blend them with a the sponge, there's something about the way that the shadow smokes out that looks like that early 2000s eye. It's really wild to me. This is what's so fun about being a girl and being, um, being able to play dress up and being able to experiment with your looks and being able to dress up for your husband or your boyfriend and, and feel sexy about yourself. It makes a huge difference. For the smoky eye, we're gonna start with the Cleopatra Hudson eye pencil it's like a gunmetal black it's black with like a, a silver shimmer to it and I've already started but you just basically go on top of where you put your black cake liner this time you don't necessarily have to blend it out because once you put the shadow on you're gonna blend out that little corner and you can go underneath as well and this time going inside the eye and into the lashes I'm gonna take a Q-tip and clean up that little point. Alexis talked a lot about how she called Pam the baby Bardot. So she was very inspired by Brigitte Bardot and you can see that of course in Pam. And I just love that to know that a look that became so iconic of that decade was from another iconic look from the 60s, maybe early 70s of Brigitte Bardot. Okay, we're going in with our smoky shadow chamois shaper. Now we're gonna go in with the black eyeshadow. This one is called Smoke It. This did not come in the kit, but I ended up buying it just so of course I could do the Pam eye. Start on the bottom and we're gonna go upward. This time you're gonna go all over the lid with your black shadow into the crease and out onto your chamois. Look at our sponge at this point. We got one corner left, sort of. Okay, so we're just going to clean up and blend out that little edge right there. How does she just do it with a sponge and a Q-tip? I just don't understand. This is still has a little bit of the brown shadow from the natural that we started with, so I'm just blending out the edges with that. I mean, the shadow chamois is supposed to make it easier, but I find it kind of frightening, to be honest, like not being able to see what it is that you're laying down. She does make it look so easy. Going back in with the sparkle dust, and we're gonna go under the brow. Whoa. Yeah, that did something there. Does it look authentic though? I think it does, I think it does. Okay, I'm gonna blend a little bit more and then we're gonna do the final lashes and our lip gloss. Yeah, this was my go-to look back in the day. Like a heavy smoky eye, nude glossy lip all over lined and a demi wispy, a demi wispy. I never knew she used demi wispies. I must've heard a rumor because I've always used them for 20 years now. And here it is, our demi wispy lash. And we're going in with the clear duo. The way she puts this on though, it's not like it's just on the band. That is how she puts the glue on. Pay no attention to my nails. Everything's a catastrophe right now. But the way that she puts the glue is she coats all over the actual lashes. She says it will dry clear. I've already done it on this eye, so it does dry clear, but it certainly takes a while. I do prefer myself to use the dark glue. Here we are, with all of this glue all over the lashes, starting in the center, and it should just stick right to the lashes. Look at all that glue, that is wild. And then, surprise, surprise, we're gonna coat with more mascara. I don't know if it's the eyeliner I use or all the shadow, the shadow chamois, maybe getting down under and flicking that shadow up, but oh my God, I can't get anything to stick there. I'm gonna try, maybe let my eyes set for a minute. We're gonna do the luscious gloss. This is what pulls it all together and, and ties it all in. But we gotta go in with the, the pink gloss and we're gonna put it on thick. And then, you know I gotta throw on a blonde wig. Get Pammy vibes. Glamala. The mix of these two is really nice. You've now finished the perfect Alexis Vogel makeover. So this is the look I was going for because Alexis did her makeup here. This is the Alexis Vogel special. I can't tell whether she has blue or green eyes, but I've read blue, done the blue eyes, blonde hair, skinny brows, and that glossy pink lip. I'm kind of feeling it. I'm ready for my Playboy centerfold. I really just wanted to honor Alexis Vogel and her techniques, her products. You can actually still find these products at ravishingcosmetics.com. This is not sponsored. I spent about $500 on that kit alone and it was worth it just to relive my youth from my 20s. Let's just talk about the products. So most of them were great 
for this type of look. From what I remember of doing those sort of smoky eyes and the way that the shadows, they blended, they were sort of dusty, a lot of fallout, but the blend was so easy. And I could see a lot of people really liking all of these products, but maybe using them in a bit more of a modern way. The lip stain I was maybe not feeling, but overall love the way that that turned out. And it really worked to look exactly like the way Pam did her lips or Alexis did Pam's lips. Hope you enjoyed this blast from the past. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you on the next one. Any love sick moose around? Me! Whoa! No! Ah! 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 Oh my god, Mitch, I'm sorry. I was just so surprised to see you standing there. Not as surprised as I was. <laughs> <laughs>